Welcome to User and I, the channel where I explore all things UX and UI design. And today I want to show you how to create better forms using padding and margin in Figma. So first things first, we're going to create our elements as components. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to call this placeholder for now. And I'm basically going to convert this into a form input. So I'm going to group that. I'm going to add some auto layout. I'm going to add a stroke, call it outside. And what I want to do is round the edges a tiny bit, take up the stroke weight, and I'm deliberately going to leave the margin and padding till last because I want to show you what this looks like with and without margin and padding. I'm going to change that to component and I'm going to call that input. I'm going to drag that off the screen and then I'm going to drag a copy in. What I did there, I held option on the Mac. And as you can see, when you hover over something, you hold option you get another arrow which shows it's duplicating it. The reason why I did that is because I wanted to create a copy of this input. So we've got that here and it's set to hug, which is fine. Um, what I will do next is duplicate this here. I'm going to make the, a group. I'm gonna add auto layout. I'm going to change the space into 60. That's one. Then I'm going to group that. Then I'm going to duplicate that by holding option and dragging. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to make this the same width as there. I'm going to change this to fill container. And then I'm going to group those two. I'm going to add another auto layout. So it's going to be a, I'm going to take this down to zero deliberately. And in fact, I'll take this to zero deliberately as well. It seems we have a problem somewhere. Two inputs, two placeholders. Ah, I had a duplicate. That's fine. Um, I'm going to make that fill container. Also, I'm going to make both of these fill container. And one more, I guess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start naming these so we know what this is for. I'm going to call that name. I'm going to call that email. Well, let's do something else. First name. last name, email, and message. So immediately what we see is that we have a form. It's not a pretty form, but this is the whole point of the video. What we can see is that down here, our inputs don't have any margin or any padding. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna click on our import component, and we're gonna come down here and we're going to start playing with the margin and padding. So immediately what we can see is that it starts looking a lot nicer already. I'm going to leave that as 20. I'm also going to change the font size a little bit. And then I'm also going to add some margin to the top and the bottom. So we can already see it starts looking a bit more like a form. It looks a lot neater. I'm also going to change the transparency because placeholder text in a form is never a hundred percent opacity and then i'm going to change it to regular just so it's a bit more visible next what i'm going to do is click on the entirety of our frame which holds all our form inputs and this is where we start to add mar margin because like i said in my last video padding is the space in between the element and its border and margin is the difference is the space in between elements so what we do is that we can do that here in Figma. 
Now immediately what we can see here with the margin we got we have so far, if I center align that again, is that first name and last name appear to be related fields, email is a separate one and so is message. But the reality is, is that these first three fields, they actually relate to the user who's going to be filling this out. So what we want to do is that we want to make sure that these look related because they are. So what I'll do is that I'll put that in another auto layout and I'll make the spacing 35 and I'll make this spacing 35 as well. And then what I would then do is let's actually make that a bit smaller. If we call that 30 and we call that 30 and then we increase the spacing here so that's double and then what we can have is we'll just drag this down a little bit just so it looks like a message box so immediately what we have is relatable fields I'm gonna scratch this out as well what we can then do is set that to fill container we can set this to fill container and those fields will respond so we've now made this responsive so if we drag this right side it will go in and out which is exactly what we want so what we have now is very clear we have first name last name and email so we know those fields are related and this space down here is reserved for our message and we can clearly see that from what we had before to now this looks a lot better it looks a lot neater obviously the colors are a bit off but the point of the video is for margin and padding and how we can design better forms using them so just to reiterate we've added spacing within the boxes so when people are typing on the website or it could be an app the text isn't so pushed to the far edge if we remove the padding what we start seeing is that that text is right up against the edge and that's not what we want it doesn't look nice it doesn't look clear so if i undo that we immediately see that the, it does look better with padding and obviously with the spacing between the message and the last name first name and email we can see that these are related fields that's another way to show a relationship with tiny elements like dividers and dots and things like that so in your next design think about how you can use spacing whether it's within the element with padding or outside of the element between other elements using margin to communicate a relationship and design clever user interfaces for your users and i'll see you in the next video